Hello, this is part two of a tutorial on the basics of Keycloak. It is targeted to Java developers. In part two, we will secure two servlet based applications in the database JAXRS backend service. We will then boot up and run the demo. Each app has protected resources that require specific role permission of user or admin. After we configure our applications, user role mapping information will be propagated when we run the demos. So let's get to work. The first thing we have to do is add some configuration files to each application and service we are deploying so that they can be enabled to use the realm we created in part one of this tutorial. The code for these projects lives in the Keycloak distribution directory under the examples slash unconfigured demo directory. So we go to examples. Oops, go to examples, yeah. To an LS. And we go to the unconfigured demo directory. Okay. I'm going to bring up this code within my favorite IDE IntelliJ. The first project we are going to configure is the customer portal application. This project is structured as a Maven WAR servlet project. The first thing we need to do is go to the webinf directory and edit the web.xml file right here. All this XML here is standard Java EE servlet configuration. As you can see, we have already defined some basic security constraints for this particular application. You can see here for all URLs under customers, need to be secured by uh, the user role. All URLs under admin can only have access via the admin role. So this is specific to this particular customer portal application. We do have to edit one thing in this web.xml file. We have to change the login config auth method here from basic to keycloak. That's it. Hit save. The next thing we need to do is create a keycloak configuration file called keycloak.json. Create it here. This file lives in webinf. This file contains basic information about the realm that will secure this application, specifically the realm name, the name of this application as it's referenced within Keycloak, the URL of the authentication server, and the public key of the realm. What's great about Keycloak is you do not have to craft this file yourself. You can actually get a template for it directly from the Keycloak administration console. So let's do that. Okay, if we go to the applications item here in the administration console, if you remember from part one, we, we defined a customer portal application. So we click on that link. And the last sub menu item of the application page here is installation. We click on that, we click that we specify a format we want to see a configuration file template for. We'll click keycloak.json. And this is the JSON that you need to cut and paste into the keycloak.json file that we've defined in the product. Okay, click save. Okay, that's it for the customer application. All we need to do is create this uh, keycloak.json file and uh, edit web.xml to put keycloak as the login config auth method. Next, we have to do the same thing for the product portal. So we'll go to the product app directory here. Similarly, you see that security constraints can have already been set up within web.xml of the product project. Change basic to keycloak. Hit save. Go to the admin console. Go to applications. Click on a product portal. Click on installation. Select the keycloak.json format. Cut and paste it.
into a keyclip.json file. Hit save. And finally, we have to configure the database service, which is right here in the database service directory. We open up web to XML, change auth method to keycloak, hit save, create a keycloak.json file. Go to the administration console, click on the database application, click on installation, keycloak.json, cut and paste, save it. Okay, that's it. We have uh, configured most of our demo so far. The last thing we have to do is actually build the projects. So we'll go to the configured demo directory. I'm going to hit Maven, clean, install, JBoss, AS, deploy. This is compiling all of our, every single demo in this particular example directory. And one of them, one of them are, is going to fail because uh, we haven't set that one up yet. That's actually a different tutorial that you'll see in the documentation page on our website. But you see our customer portal application was compiled. So was our product portal. And so was our database project as well. So now we can actually run the demo. So let's do that. Okay, so to run the demo, we'll go to HTTP colon, slash slash localhost colon 8080 slash customer portal. And this brings us to the welcome page of our demo here. Um, this welcome page is not secured, but to get an actual customer listing, from the customer portal, we will click on the customer listing link here. This is a secured link, so it will require us to log in. So let's do that. I'll enter in the user name that I created in part one of this tutorial. Specify my password, hit login. And now I'm brought to the customer listing page. So what happened was when we logged in, uh, we were redirected back to this application. The application obtained a token from the authentication server, and it used this token to talk to the REST database service in the back end um, by passing that token when it made its REST invocation, and then finally it got the customer listing back. Another thing, another piece of information that this particular token has is the information about the user that was logged in. So this information right here was actually pulled from the ID token that was obtained when the application logged you in. Okay, we can go to the products page. The products page works in a similar way. And then finally, we can log out. Okay, that's it for part two of this tutorial on the basics of Keycloak. Check out part three on our website. Thanks.